Hi, welcome to the Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In this video, we'll be taking a look at episodes 1 through 4 of The Familiar of Zero. Louise de la Valliere belongs to a noble and historical family of mages who studies at the Tristane Academy of Magic. Her peers call her Louise the Zero for not being able to use her magic properly. When a test at her academy requires her to summon a familiar spirit, which acts as a servant and partner for a mage, she decides that she wants a familiar who will be more awesome than her classmates. However, she fails to achieve this target and ends up summoning Saito Hiraga, an ordinary Japanese boy. The mage and the familiar are stuck with each other as their life together begins. What kind of adventures will they stumble upon on their journey? Let's find out. The episode starts in the magical world of Halkegenia, where Louise de la Valliere is studying at the Tristane Academy for Magicians. Today is her first day as a second-year student. A new teacher called Ms. Chevreux introduces herself to the class. She tells them that her element is Earth, and that's what she'll be having her lectures on. A student answers one of her questions and calls himself Garmont. He has a nickname too, which is irrelevant, but it looks like every magician in this world has a long nickname. How do they even remember them? She asks Louise to perform a simple spell, which is to change pebbles into brass. Her classmates oppose the idea, saying that picking her is dangerous. What's so dangerous about alchemy is the question here. Louise understandably blasts off at them, insisting to do the spell while the rest of her class are scared, looking for a place to hide. They can just use their magic to disappear or cast a shield around themselves. Louise starts casting the spell following the instructions of her teacher. On the other hand, the principal is content in his office, enjoying the safe first day at school. He is not happy when his secretary, Miss Longville, takes away his pipe. A man has to satisfy his needs. He confirms that the following day is when the second year students have to summon familiar spirits. A familiar spirit is a lifetime servant and friend. His familiar spirit is a mouse. That says a lot about him. That means he spends his days talking to this mouse. They hear a blast and guess that it's probably her again. The classroom has exploded, but the students are safe. She is bad at magic, but not that dangerous after all. Her classmates mock her by calling her Zero Louise because she has zero success rate at casting spells. The group of mean girls are shocked to learn that Louise has not received any punishment. They laugh at Louise for not having a proper nickname yet. At least her nickname is easier to remember than the rest of theirs. The red-haired girl, Kircha, is looking for forward to seeing the familiar spirit that Louise is going to summon. Louise has had enough and goes on a rant about how her familiar spirit is going to be sacred, beautiful, and strong. She should be careful about making such claims. Louise regrets making those claims at night. We all have 3 a.m. thoughts when we regret the silly things we do. The morning arrives with everyone gathered outside for their first exam. A boy starts off with summoning a bugbear, a large and round-eyed thing. Everyone wants a cute familiar spirit rather than a weird one. Garmal's turn starts off with his monologue, which is thankfully cut short by the instructor. He summons a large mole, which isn't as formidable as he wanted. Kircha has summoned a fire salamander. It's finally Louise's turn, and she casts an unusual spell. She is not impressed with the human boy who is drooling in his sleep that appears in front of her. Saito Hiraga wakes up, but can't understand her. Kircha is too happy to find a human as her familiar. Everyone starts making fun of her. The instructor refuses her to cast the spell again. She is stuck with him as her familiar spirit no matter what. Saito thinks that all of the people are crazy, which can't be totally denied. The instructor tells her to continue with the ceremony or she'll be expelled. With a look of extreme cringe on her face, she kisses him. The familiar spirit's rune gets carved onto his hand, and he becomes unconscious. He wakes up in a room, thinking it was a dream. He thinks he's been kidnapped when he sees Louise. She tells him to wash her clothes. He doesn't understand and takes it the wrong way. Louise picks up her wand and casts a silent spell. Is this a good idea with her history of messing up at all her spells? She may end up setting him on fire. When he stands up after the spell hits him, they are able to understand each other. Saito tells her his name. She tells him that he is her familiar spirit. The instructor who was present at the summoning reads a book and decides to inform the principal. Louise has briefed Saito about everything, including her world and magic academy. Louise is frustrated with her familiar spirit all 
already. She should have gotten something cool like a dragon. Saito runs away thinking that this is just a strange cult that likes weird practices. Louise asks Geish to help her catch Saito. Geish is using magic to float Saito around in the air, and he finally believes that he is in a different world when he sees two moons in the sky. The second episode starts in Japan, where Saito needs to find a job to be able to repair his laptop. He watches a glowing surface. His laptop falls as he enters the surface without his will and lands in Halkaginya. Hearing Louise's summons, Saito is chained up, telling Louise that he was on Earth. Louise doesn't believe that there is another world and refuses to send him back since he is her familiar spirit. She goes to sleep ordering him to wash his clothes. This world hasn't abolished slavery it seems. Louise promises to feed him as long as he does his job. Saito hands her the newly laundered clothes in the morning. However, she is having him skip breakfast for not reading her undergarments. He just missed a meal, trying to be respectful. He decides to dress her since he really doesn't want to miss a meal. Louise takes off his chains and they go off to breakfast. At the cafeteria, Saito is surprised to see that the feast is ready. She points to him to sit on the floor where he only gets a piece of bread. The level of inequality is too obvious here. Louise tells him that familiar spirits are usually left outside for meals, but she especially brought him inside. Saito obviously prefers that he was left outside. There is no class for second year students this day, so they are sitting outside trying to build relationships with their new familiar spirits. Saito isn't excited to see Kurja and her salamander, which is understandable since its tail is on fire. She mocks Louise again, which makes her lash out on Saito. Saito runs into a kind maid, Siesta, who then tells him that people who use magic are aristocrats and the rest are plebeians. She is also a plebeian. Saito spots Geish, the snobby guy who is yet again with another girl. Saito ruins his date by telling her about the first year girl Geish was with the previous night. He basically exposes his two-timing nature. The first year girl arrives there looking for Geish. Saito goes over to tell her Geish's whereabouts. This plebeian is about to spread pure mischief today. Geish is caught between both girls, while Saito keeps adding fuel to the fire from the background. The girls punch him in the face, while the whole crowd laughs. He stands up, wanting to teach some manners to Saito about how to treat an aristocrat. He wants to take revenge for his humiliation. He challenges him to a duel, telling him to come to Vestry Field. Louise starts dragging him to apologize to Geish. Maybe she doesn't know about a human boy's ego because he refuses to offer any apology. He goes towards Vestry Field, leaving behind an extremely annoyed Louise. Mr. Colbert, the instructor from the previous day, discusses Saito with Osmond, the principal. He shows him the rune that appeared on Saito's hand in the book. The boys are about to begin dueling at Vestry Field. Louise asks Geish to stop the duel. He obviously does not take her request into consideration and summons a bronze golem called Valkyrie to fight Saito. Saito is unarmed and does not know how to fight off the cheap tricks cast by Geese since he doesn't have any magic. Saito stands up again, determined not to back off. His patience level is done with their aristocratic bossiness. Geese offers to forgive him if he apologizes. He refuses. Back in the principal's office, Osman reveals that the rune on Saito's hand only appears on legendary familiar spirits. He mentions the involvement of the lost fragment of the Pentagon, which is confusing at this point. Valkyrie is badly beating up Saito, but he keeps standing up. Louise tries to intervene again, but no one is listening to her. She is impressed with his determination, but is obviously annoyed as he can't win. Geese decides to give him a chance and tosses a sword at him. Louise orders him to apologize and back down. Saito knows that he can't go back to his world, and he can do anything because he doesn't have a choice, but he's never going to apologize. He picks up the sword and the rune on his hand starts glowing. His strength and speed is enhanced and has amazing sword skills now. He fights off his bronze puppet and reaches Geish, making him give up. Everyone is highly impressed while Geish is in a state of shock, trying to come to terms with his loss by the plebeian. Saito puts down the sword and collapses. He wakes up all bandaged up in bed. Siesta tells him that he was asleep for three days. Louise is sleeping on their chair. According to Siesta, Louise has been taking care of him. He finally finds one aristocratic cute in this world. Siesta hears him, but he denies saying anything, laughing it off. Episode 3 begins at the academy, where Saito is 
just washing Louise's clothes. She has given him the laundry of all the days he was sleeping after the duel. He thanks her for taking care of him while he was unconscious. However, she bursts his little bubble of feeling important by telling him that it is the duty of a master to take care of their familiar spirit. Telling him that he is only a familiar spirit, she dismisses him to start off with his duty. Saito watches the other students with their familiar spirits that are creatures and wonders that he is on their level. Does that mean those creatures have to wash their master's underwear as well? Louise arrives there to tell him to walk her to class and get done with washing the clothes. Kerchus smirks at him from afar. She's up to no good. It's Miss Chevreuse's class today who's giving a lecture on the elements. Kircha interrupts her again to pass a comment on to Louise and her inability to use elements. Walking through the corridor, Saito tells Louise that he finally understands why her peers call her Zero and decides to make fun of her. He's singing a song about her lack of magic skills. Louise gets frustrated and tells him that he will get no meal for every Zero he has said. He tries to apologize to her, but it's too late. Late. He'd already unleashed her wrath upon himself. That night, he is dressing her up for bed and he looks too tired from skilling lunch and dinner. He tries to guilt her into taking back her punishment. She agrees to let it go and he starts thanking her but makes a comment about her breast size which angers her further. He really does not know when to shut up. She tells him that he will have no food stall and will sleep outside as his punishment. He's freezing outside, trying to sleep when Siesta comes there. The next instant, he's sitting at a table munching away at delicious his food as the servants stand surrounding him. The cook calls him our sword and offers all the leftovers they have. He tells him that he is a plebeian who beat an aristocrat, which makes him their pride. Saito tries telling them that he doesn't possess any skill, however they don't listen. That's fortunate for him because how else is he going to get food if he passes up on the opportunity of being the commoner's hero? He compliments the food which makes the cook even happier with him. All the servants have started to like him. Siesta and Saito are sitting under the moonlight talking about his condition after the duel. She tells him that he was nearly in a coma, and it was Louise who ordered an expensive potion to heal him. He walks back when he finds Kirch's salamander in the corridor, who picks him up and takes him to Kirch's room. She's standing there waiting for him in the middle of the candlelit room. Her intentions look clear enough when she confesses her love for him. She is fascinated by him since he has defeated Geish and is about to kiss him. A man called Styx shows up outside of her window to interrupt that moment and tells her that he's there because she didn't show up. She gets rid of this man with her magic. As she tries to focus her attention back to Saito, another man appears there demanding his time with her. She deals with him as well. Talking to Saito again, they are interrupted this time by three boys who want to know why she hasn't told them that she doesn't have a boyfriend. She sets her familiar spirit after them who blasts them off. She kisses Saito as the door opens to reveal Louise who isn't happy with Kircher laying her hands on her familiar spirit. Louise tells Saito to come with her, and Kircha tries to stop him, which angers Louise who threatens him that he'll get speared by ten aristocrats the next morning if he doesn't come with her. She pulls him by his ear and drags him out. She is furious at him back in her room and takes out a whip. Louise starts whipping him senseless when he stops her and asks if she is jealous. He really shouldn't have said that to an already angry girl. She kicks him down and tells him that he can date anyone else other than her, since their families have been enemies for generations. When she hears his side of the story, she considers it pathetic for a swordsman like him to be picked up by a salamander and get dragged away. He admits that it was his first time ever holding a sword, which would be hard to believe for anyone since he fought so skillfully. Louise tells him that when a familiar spirit makes a contact, they can gain some special abilities sometimes. Permitting him to sleep back in the room, she whips him again as he starts to utter the jealous word for the second time. With the arrival of the next morning, Kircha is thinking about ways to get close to Saito and watches Louise and Saito going out on a horse. She arrives in Tabitha's room telling her to get ready as they are going out. They fly off to catch up with the other two on her familiar spirit, the Sylphid. Louise and Saito are walking in a market and reach a weapons shop. She's looking at swords for him so he can protect himself against Kircha. The shopkeeper brings out the most expensive sword which can't be afforded by Louise. The only sword within her price range does not even look like like a sword, but they buy it and leave. The sword looks like the trash from a flea market and Louise tells him to be happy.
happy with what he has got. Kircher watches this and thinks that Louise is trying to buy off Saito's affections. She gives him the same expensive sword that Louise couldn't buy. It's the Great Sword from Germania, and Saito loves it. The girls ask him to pick the swords he likes better and angers him even further when he tries to choose both. The girls challenge each other to a duel. They hear one of the swords talking, and it's the one that Louise got. Saito likes a talking sword that introduces itself as Delfinger. Louise does not want to be stuck with a weird talking sword and isn't excited about Saito using it at all. The fourth episode kicks off at the principal's office where Mr. Osman writes a letter on the orders of the palace and gives it to the weirdly dressed man out in front of him. The man is Count Mott, who flirts with Miss Longville on his way out. Osman tells her that the palace has warned them about a thief called Fouquet, who has been using magic to steal treasures. They have to protect the treasure that they borrowed from the palace called the Staff of Destruction, which sounds less like a treasure and more like a weapon of mass destruction. He mentions that the treasure is locked away with tight security before enraging his assistant with his harassing tactics. At night, Saito is back doing his usual chore, washing his master's clothes. Siesta startles him, and the next instant, she's washing the silk cloth that Louise had given him. He thanks her when she asks him about his home. He vaguely replies to her that it's somewhere far away. Siesta also thanks him for giving her the courage to stand up to nobility, just like he does. Saito is walking back to his room when Kircha opens the door to tell him that she wants to give him the sword she bought, since it was a gift for Saito in the first place. He goes inside with her and starts admiring the sword. A sword like that will definitely make him feel like a hero. However, what about Louise? What will she say if he accepts the sword? She tells him not to worry about Louise. He asks her why she chose him when she has so many men running around after her. Kircha starts listing down the things she finds attractive in him, which includes mannerisms that indicate an ill-bred childhood, shabby appearance, and uncleanliness. Basically, she likes how poor he is. He returns the sword to her and starts going back. She starts offering him other valuable things, including an earring, a talisman ring, and a boom, which is her family heirloom. She tackles him when he starts to leave again, when Louise arrives and takes him away from there. Louise isn't happy with him for following Kircha again and believes that he he deserves more punishment. She starts whipping him again. The next morning, Siesta is leaving the academy for an unknown destination. Louise instructs Saito to remain outside with the other familiars since he embarrasses her inside the classroom. He's waiting with the other creatures until her class finishes. He gets bored, so he goes exploring, and the cook invites him to the kitchen. He's stuffing his face with leftovers, and when he inquires about Siesta, the cook tells him that she quit to go serve a nobleman named Count Mott, so that's where she went this morning. Count Mon is a messenger from the palace, who occasionally comes to the institute like this morning. He always acts very cocky and smart. Saito wonders why Siesta was sent to work for such a person. When Delfinger, the sword tells him that when a nobleman requests for a girl by name, it's usually so she can become his mistress. He's worried about Siesta after hearing this information. Saito interrupts Geisha's date and begins asking him something. Louise is wondering why Saito isn't back for dinner. Kircha arrives there asking about him as well, bringing him a meal. Geish tells him that Saito asked him for the directions to Count Mott's manor. Louise leaves him there with fury in his eyes. Saito finally reaches Count Mott's manor after an hour-long walk. Count Mott is making his advances towards Siesta when Saito is announced. Siesta is surprised to hear his name. He asks Count Mott to send Siesta back to the Institute and offers to do anything you want in return. He's disgusted with the Count's intentions for Siesta. Count Mott tries to strike a deal with him, mentioning a book that he desires which was summoned by a mage in an experiment. It is the heirloom of a family in Germania. Saito figures out that he is talking about Kircha and her family heirloom and starts off towards the institute to get it from her when he runs into Louise on the road. Back in her room, he helps her dress up for bed and slips off when she falls asleep. Kircha agrees to give the book to him if he dates her. Saito gets upset at her and leaves after picking up the Germania sword. Tabitha watches Saito go off on his horse toward Count Mott's place. His intentions are noble, but his plans aren't clear yet. Siesta is waiting for Saito to come rescue her back at the Count's place. She is told that he is waiting
waiting for her in his bedroom, and she cannot help but cry. Kircha and Tabitha wake Louise up. It's known that if a peasant draws a sword in a noble's house, the result never ends well for the commoner. Saito is brought before Count Mott since he was trying to sneak in. He draws his sword at him. The three girls are riding on Tabitha's familiar spirit. When Kircha tells Louise that if he draws his sword at the noble, she will be held responsible as well. As he holds the sword, his rune doesn't light up like the last time when he is waiting for the same magic to happen. Count Mott starts fighting him with his magic and is about to pierce him with a dagger when the girls arrive to stop him. Louise apologizes to Count Mott on behalf of her familiar spirit when he tells her that her entire family will be put to the sword. Kircha interrupts them and takes out the book that the Count wants and hands it over to him. He also agrees to send Siesta back with him. Saito looks at the book that the Count wanted so desperately and finds out that it's an old porn magazine that was summoned by Kircha's grandfather from Earth. At the Institute, Siesta thanks Saito again for bringing her back safely. Louise is extremely annoyed at Saito and wants to punish him most severely for acting in such a stupid way. How did Saito arrive in this world? Is he really an ancient familiar spirit? We'll find out in the next couple of episodes of The Familiar of Zero. And if you are a subscriber with notifications enabled, you'll find out soon enough.